Okay guys, I'm going to bore you with a little more of this stuff today. I've done uh, quite a few different designs. As of right now, this one is pretty close to the best I've done. And I do like the way the uh, flag flows around. So let's take... Uh, Let's turn it on. I think I figured a way to keep the glare off the screen. Let's see if that works. All right, lower your uh, lower your volume. Okay, so we gained a few CFM, only a few. I think this is about 212. I think Max did it about 2, 213. Now, I worked on this side of the chamber, plenum, and I, I knocked that big chunk of, of iron off and blended it with the bottom, but it really didn't make that big a difference. I thought it would the way the flag bends around there, but it didn't make a big difference as far as flow. You can see, well, I think you should be able to see, I tried a, a ton of different textures. I'll show you how I did the different textures, because that's some interesting stuff. I was I was off the deep end today. How unusual! Let's take, uh, let's take a look at my scribble, because there's a bunch of tests, and I want to go through it quick, because it's just too incredibly boring for even me to go through. Okay, all the flows on this page are going to be uh, 10,000s, 20,000s, 30,000s, 40,000s, 50,000s, 60,000s, 70,000s. Okay, so this is completely empty plenum with our drilled spots. Okay, we max out at like 198. Now I did a big dome in the middle with small ones on the side, all smooth. And I got these flows. It went up a little bit. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Then I did a diamond texture on the same setup. How do you do a diamond texture? Well, I'll show you. I have a diamond style burr. Now, when I bought this, I didn't realize what kind of a pattern it would make. As far as I'm concerned, it's absolutely useless for grinding. The only thing it does is it makes straight lines. But it worked out kind of cool with this. I think after we go over these flows, I'll show you how I did these different patterns. So, what happened if I took the same thing and I put a little texture on it? I got a little bit of a boost in like the absolute, no, I got a little tiny bit at the very top and that's it. Okay, so change the design, put dual bottom domes, two small side domes. We get that up around to 12 and a half, which is pretty good. Now though, that's smooth. It's a smooth texture. And then I take the same thing and I put the diamond texture on it. And I squeeze just a touch more out of it. Almost everywhere. So that is my final design as of right this minute. 
Now, how do I do the designs? Let me see if I can set the uh, camera up on a, on the stand. All right, so I did do all this in the plenum because you got to stick the clay to the manifold, which is hard enough to do. So after you get it in place, I literally just take the burr and roll it over it. And it makes the little diamond impressions. Now, will I be able to do something like this if I did it in epoxy? Well, I was thinking of, we had a bunch of good uh, comments that said, you know, you should just make up a mold and then fill it with epoxy. Well, I could make a mold similar to how I'm doing this and then fill it with epoxy and the epoxy will take up the... Uh, the texture. I think you guys can see that. Now, because I'm out of my mind, that was not the only texture I thought up today. Let's pause here. Okay, let's see if you guys can see this. Very aggressive uh, double cut. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, the more aggressive texture did take a few CFM away. But depending upon the fuel you're using, it may be worth a few CFM. Let's do, uh, let's do at least one more. I should add to that, the type of fuel and the type of either carburetor or fuel injection would make a big difference what kind of texture you want. If you're using something like a throttle body injection, that is uh, pouring a lot of liquid fuel, you would want something relatively rough, which is what I used to use my throttle body injection stuff. Now this is, this is huge. This is my big uh, single cut aluminum. I didn't try this one, but I thought it would make an interesting texture. Since it makes such big cuts, I would go over it more than once to give it a little bit different. I'm in, I'm in here. I'm filming. Okay, I think I'll bore you with at least one more. This is a, a fine double cut flame. I think I like it. What I do like about the diamond, which is why I really picked it, is it's non-directional. Anytime you're using something with a, a tooth like this, it's going to have a, a direction to the cuts. And obviously, as the air and the fuel are going past, the angle of those cuts do make a difference how they're going to... Uh, reintroduce liquid fuel into the system. 
It's just something to think about. Okay, we should add that the plenum actually likes the domes on the side, which is interesting since the plenum is ridiculously tiny. You would think it wants as much area as possible, but it likes that. You do have some, we have some flag turbulence, I guess we could call it there, where it waves back and forth really hard, but it does the same thing with nothing in the plenum. So overall the flag is definitely a little calmer with these in place. Alright guys, where 11 minutes goes I have no idea, but if you put up with this, I give you credit guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in any case, it's fun to goof around and waste hours on this stuff. Will it make any difference as far as horsepower? Well, we gained a couple CFM. Now remember, we're getting 212 through the manifold, which is tiny, through the head. I'm pretty sure when we get our plenum extensions, things will change. But at least I have a good idea of what I like and what I don't like is in the plenum. How much horsepower can you make with 212 or 213 CFM? You can do pretty good. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.